Australians never refer to their fallen soldiers as martyrs because we don't see it that they were dying for a religious cause, even though the principles and the values that they were fighting for were so strong and so important to them. And there's something potent about someone laying down their life for something they believe in so much. So if we ever wonder about the seedbed of the connection with Villa Bretonneux, of course, in the recapture of the town, over 1,200 Australians died. And in the months surrounding that, in this very area, many more Australians laid down their lives. This is the Adelaide Cemetery on the edge of town. And just here alone, over 500 Australian graves rest. Within a few years of the war ending, the town of Villa's Bread, as it was now known in Australia, was still deep in the hearts and minds of the troops who fought here. And particularly in the state of Victoria, given that it was the Victorian Brigade that fought on the northern end of the town, but also uh, the leader of that brigade, Pompey Elliott, and the leader of the whole Australian force was Sir John Monash. Both of these guys lived in Melbourne. So it didn't take long before Meetings were arranged, committees were formed, and funds were raised. And by 1927, this school was built as a lasting gift between the people of Victoria and the people of Villas Brett. And in fact, it was even Victorian school children who sacrificially raised money toward this school. Some of them had lost fathers, brothers, and uncles in the battle right here in Villas Brett. Back then, it was a boys' school. Now, it's a co-ed primary school with a message. This was the first uh, tribute of Australia to us, you know, the first real wonderful gift after the First World War. It was inaugurated in 1927, mm -hmm. and so that's quite soon, you know, afterwards. Um, and uh, this hall is unique in a French school, because normally French schools do not have uh, assembly halls like this. We don't have that. This is, uh, it's an um, Australian architect who, who designed all this, you see. And so for him, naturally, there must be an assembly hall. It's, uh, it's normal in a, in a yeah. you know, uh, yeah. British, I mean, Commonwealth schools. And uh, it's very beautiful. It's all, all the wood around us is, um, how do you call this? Um, paneling, all this wood paneling is made of a Pacific maple, Pacific maple. It was all shipped from, from Australia. Yeah. And uh, the carver, the sculptor, I would say, the sculptor, John Grant, you see his photograph over there. Yeah. Well, the, the sculptor sculpted all these exotic animals. I mean, for us, they are exotic. For you, they are normal. <laughs> but we don't have those in France at all. And Melbourne was the town which adopted us. Mm after this terrible war, you know, and, and the town was totally destroyed, uh, reduced to rubbles on the ground. And so the Australians, um, there is a big um, wave of generosity of Australia towards us, and because they had lost also so many of their sons in our ground, they wanted to make it into something uh, worthwhile to the living. <laughs> 